Well, each week we start uh, the normal pattern, at least I do, with the show of Welcome to the Show. But this time I'm going to do something different. Although I just said Welcome to the Show, so I kind of still follow the same pattern, which we're <laughs> just creatures of habit, aren't we? But there's a cartoon that I came across uh, that was talking about uh, this concept of mind mapping, how we can kind of read each other and know a little bit about what the other person's thinking, doing, okay. th- who they are. I mean, in marriage, it's particularly prevalent. In parenting, it's prevalent too, but it's also prevalent in other areas. But there's yeah. a cartoon that depicts this that Schnars talks about in his book that um, a woman comes into the kitchen to find her husband spraying the bottom side of a cookie sheet with the cooking spray. Okay. But it's the bottom outside of the cookie sheet. <clears throat> okay. Not where you normally cook. And she's like, what are you doing? It was, well, your dad and I wanted some cookies. So I'm making a batch and it said, spray the outside of the cookie sheet. So that's what I'm doing to the, which she, then you could see from her facial reaction. She's like, oh, men are such idiots in the kitchen. That's not how you do it. Let me do it. He's like, okay. So he hands her the pan and he walks back in and he sits down by his father-in-law who they're watching football and says, it worked. She's going to make him bring it to us. And his, <laughs> and his father, father-in-law goes, I knew she would do that. Wow. <laughs> wow. He does that to his own daughter. But it's what we do because we know who we're up against. Usually we know who we're with. We know yeah. their tendencies and we can take advantage of that. Yeah. So note to self, <laughs> if you're that woman who would do that, just watch him and see how it works out when that, he That's one way if you want to change it up. Outside. But for some people... <laughs> You watch somebody doing something that's like, that's not how you do it. And it's really, you can't help yourself. Yeah. Just you come in step and in and take, take over. over. And that's part of how we do life. And that's part of how we get in our own way, which is where we're going today in today's show. But uh, it's, I think it's a great way to frame some of the threads we talk about throughout the history of our show, which yeah. this is Passionately Married Podcast. So welcome. welcome. We'd love to hear from you. And if you do this, let us know. 214-702-9565. And what's the things that you can't let go when somebody else is doing it wrong, quote unquote, you have to step in. We'd, I'd be curious to hear uh, what what people do. <laughs> you just can't stop. You can't help yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got to be all kinds of things. And you could also email us at feedback at Um And nice little plug right now for the getaway that's coming up next year in June 13 through mm-hmm. 15, 2024 here in the DFW area. Registration's going on now. Uh, you can s- reserve your spot at passionatelymarried.net forward slash getaway and come join us. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. And we'll talk more about this kind of concept of the deeper inner week, inner workings. That's hard to say for, for whatever Weaving, reason. working. <clears throat> Weaving. That's where, that's what you caught it. See, you know, and read where I'm going and how I got caught between those two things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about during the getaway, we explore more of what's the processes that are actually at play in marriage and what do we do better with those? Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of those things we can't change. And today's episode, we're going to talk some about that. And maybe the titles, what drew you in, uh, conditionally unconditional. I started promoting it on yeah, social what does media. That even mean? Right. I promoted it on social media uh, Monday this week on the week it aired and just said, Hey, what do you think of this statement? And one of the first comments that came in is you're going to have to explain. Cause I got no idea what you're talking about. Exactly. And then I, I just replied, well, you have to tune in on Wednesday and to which then they replied a little bit later. Okay. Now I think I kind of understand what you're thinking because it just took a little while to think it through yeah. and realize, Oh, I see what you're saying here. Yeah. But coming up today um, on today's show, everybody gets the full show because this is one that I want to unpack where we'll spend the first part of the time talking about just this idea of unconditional love and unconditional components of marriage and relationships Mm -hmm. versus conditional. What does that Mm -hmm. even mean? And then we want to spend the last part of the episode going through how do we address the things that need to be addressed in better ways because there's still stuff I have to face in married life and in relationship that matter to me. But I can oftentimes, I can't help myself and I blame other people or I overstep or my family of origin plays out or I try to control or, you know, all these different things. The phrase of I can't help myself just cracks me up. Well, because I get it. I, I mean, I've, 
I'm that way with chips and queso. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Fair enough. But there's so many things in life, just the that res- the responsiveness to the lady, you know, I you're not doing it right, so I, I need to do it right. Right. Uh, there's a, a number of different areas in life that uh, a lot of us say, I just can't help myself. Right. And and it's and my emotions take over. Yeah. And I erupt and you know, it's it there's it just feeds off itself because there's a biology at play in us that just can overrun us. Yeah. I mean, the psychological term would be flooding. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, um, Schnarch's term would be regressing. I mean, but it's all talking about the same concept mm-hmm. that we just overstep and react. And usually the motivation is trying to gain control or avoid or get out of a conflict and change the tension right then mm-hmm. rather than address what really needs to be addressed. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's where we're heading today. Okay. And we're already heading that way. So let's just keep going. So it. when you think about the idea of um, conditionally unconditional, because I I sprung this on you a couple of days ago and your first reaction was, you're going to have to explain. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Same as the reaction on the person on Insta. I, what? Um, right. Yeah. So let's start first with unconditional, right? Because I think there's this belief that um, we have, we should have, and can have unconditional love in relationships, or unconditional relationships. Right. Well, well I hear about. I mean, this is there's the book titles about this too. Book titles, there. and and it's typically a divine. It's it's God's unconditional love for us, right? This agape love that can we as humans attain. Right. Well, and I believe just to get out ahead of this, I believe like you're, like you're talking about here, Pam, um, the only avenue of unconditional love is spiritual. God has unconditional love. We could even do a little more of a segue into this concept too, because we still have to receive that love. So there's a condition to it, (laughs) but he's still giving it unconditionally. Right. Not from his side. And that's where we look at here, right? Is typically what's my role. I can't right. do anything about your role. I can't do anything about you receiving it. Right. But, but a lot of this is because we've had these times over the course of our shows, uh, because this week is 12 years. Happy birthday, uh, by the way. <laughs> For the show? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. Um, just, just dawned on to me. To you. You uh, rock, Corey. Thank you. Job but it, well But it's recognizing that uh, we have these components that we believe, I think, a lot of times that when I go into a relationship, I've got to keep it unconditional and I've got to stay mm. unconditionally. Like there's no out for me. There's no, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. It's an unconditional commitment I have made mm-hmm. where I think that sells everything short. If we do that, hence the word conditional. Okay. Because I Why think, does it sell things short? Well, because there's, there's two things that come to mind. One, uh, in, a, in relationships where I am treated really poorly, cheated on, abused, taken advantage of, used, neglected. Yeah. You know, and again, I think this concept applies to all relationships. Mm-hmm. So I have to recognize, we'll, we'll talk a lot about it in marriage, but it absolutely will apply to friendships, to family mm-hmm. of origin, coworkers. It's just a different defined relationship, different aspects. Yeah. I get treated poorly. The de- the relationship changes. Right. Yeah. But we have a lot of times where we have these things that are, if you think about it, the way we operate relationships are, it's characterized by how I'm retreat- treated in return. Okay. Right. That it's sure. I well, am I not going to get into a relationship with someone if at least right off the bat I get treated poorly? Right. I'm never going to dive into that relationship in the first place, and then we get into a relationship where we're in, and something changes. Right. Where we see that their marketing department goes away. Right. And we start seeing the real come out. Right. But it's, but it's recognizing, I think a lot of times what happens is we get into relationships and there's an element of transactional component to it. Sure. And and I need to acknowledge that's the conditions I have. Mm -hmm. And when I can start to see that, I think you start to realize there are things in marriage that I don't need to tolerate. 
There's behaviors I don't need to tolerate. And those are the conditions that you're saying put on it? When I can look at it right, yes. Well, does that mean that I my love is conditional or just how I want to be treated within the relationship, I've got boundaries. I think on it. my choice to stay in the depth I stay within a relationship is conditional. Maybe my love, I can try to really work to be unconditional with how I express it because that's who I want to be. Because this is the premise of the whole title of the show of that when I can realize that a healthy relationships, that we have to have conditional relationships. But within those, I can express my thoughts, feelings, and actions unconditionally. Sure. Right. I sure. can express me unconditionally, which is less contingent on how are they going to respond, more contingent on who am I, who do I want to be, how do I want to operate, right? I mean, so it's realizing. Yeah, I, I, got, I got what you're saying. Yeah. So if you can look at it, when you have that kind of a framework, I believe this is what actually makes the relationship better. The having the boundaries makes the relationship better. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And recognizing there's conditions involved because if both parties realize this could end, yeah, I need to be on a better behavior, if not my best behavior in relationship, because there's no guarantee my partner's here. Right. Well, isn't this the same going back to any life lesson that we've gone through, struggle that we go through, conflict that we go through? That's what makes us better, makes us grow up. Right. right? And and if you see someone that seemingly has had no conflict throughout their life, how have they grown up? What what have they what have they had to refine to refine them? Right. So it's kind of the same way in a relationship, right? That um if my relationship hasn't gone through something, is it still an infancy? Is it still? Well, this is one of the phrases I use with clients when I start hearing their story of what goes on in their life, that a lot of times I'll hear this story. It's the, the common thread can be, well, I thought we had a pretty good relationship and then such and such came out or such and such happened. And I'm not talking about anything that's a major indiscretion okay. yeah. or, or, or mistake. It's just all of a sudden one of them recognized something different. And so one of the reactions I have to that is seeing it as, okay, you guys have had a good relationship on the surface. Saying they had a good relationship just because they didn't have any conflict. Well, because they could get along well, they could, mm -hmm. they could manage the household. Well, they could uh, create a house, a, a financial portfolio and a story. Well, they didn't have much depth to it though. Yeah. Because the depth is where we start having our conditions come into play even more. Yeah. Cause if I'm with a friend and they uh, say, Hey, I'll call you tomorrow. And they don't depending on the status of my friendship with them, I might let that slide. Cause it's like, yeah, that's, I realize that they got busy. But if you were <laughs> to say, Hey, I'll call you tomorrow and you don't, I'd be like, what gives? Yeah. You said you were going to call. You said you were going to call because I would hold you to a different standard because that's the condition I have with our relationship. Well, it's the meaning behind the relationship, right? Yeah. That, that places that on it. So, okay. When you're driving at this, tell me what you're driving at then with the conditions of, is it bad that I have conditions? No, I think it's, I think we need to make them honest and out in the open. Okay but not use them as a weapon. Okay. Right. Okay. You're saying they usually are used as a weapon I think we or could. they just can be. I think we could. And that's where we'll get to in a, a, okay. towards the end of the show when okay. we start unpacking these things, because this is all I want. I want to back up just a little bit to help give a framework for anybody that's newer to the show that okay. may not be sure what, what we believe and how we operate because it, the premises of our main points matter and how we're framing this. Okay. Gotcha. Because we believe marriage is designed to help you grow up. Relationships are designed to help us grow up. And the more important ones or the ones higher up the hierarchy mm -hmm. require the most pressure of our own growth. True. Right. Because your presence in my life for the last 30 plus years in marriage, 34 mm -hmm. years, 35 years, almost coming up. Wow. That's coming up right on the corner too of our relationship. Yeah. 
you require better in me just because we're in relationship <laughs> and so as yeah. I do you yeah just because there's this element of constantly both of us trying to just be better almost requires the other to have to do the same mm -hmm. and it's not like we always are great at it but it's a it's a dynamic in a marriage because I don't like the fairy tale idea that well, this is unconditional and this is happily ever after forever. And because we don't know, I mean, we were talking about this in pre-show that yeah. based on the premise that we believe only God creates and offers the unconditional love. And the one thought I said was, well, maybe dogs do because, you know, you can be gone for a minute or gone for three days and they, oh, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. It's so so good excited. To see you. But if you treat them poorly over any length of time, They'll, they may still come to you, but their tail will be down. Their ears will be down. Their head will be down. That's not love. That's obedience. Yeah. A whole different demeanor. Right. And so if you think about it, a lot of what we do spiritually can fall into that too. Is it mm. really love or is it obedience? Mm. A lot of what we could do relationally, is it love or is it obedience? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean obedience to some dictator. I mean, obedience that this is the role I'm supposed to play. Right. And if right. you are in a relationship where it's some dictator, we need to talk. <laughs> Give me an email. <laughs> well, I, and, and aren't there seasons of where just obedience for lack of a better word, I mean, using that in the dog phrase is one way, but, um, stick into your role and playing your part well, even though you're being treated poorly. Um, that's that can just be part of things for a season. Right. Well, that's where Hopefully I would, Hopefully it's just a season. I don't like the idea of obedience. I like the I idea like of I'm sticking to a commitment, commitment that I made, mm -hmm. not necessarily to the person yet. I'm making the commitment I've made to myself of I'm going to see this through. And I think that's what keeps marriage in the sacred stature it takes in people's lives. Yeah. Because I've made a commitment. I'm not going to just haphazardly throw it away. And an interesting thing mm. on a quick side note, you know, the marital, the, the statistics of ma people being married are, lo are lower now. People are not getting married more than ever in history. Yeah. Living together, trying things and out. And some people can think of that as a bad thing in the sense of, well, they don't care. They, they don't respect marriage. But some of that also from the research I've seen is because they do respect marriage. They don't want the commitment. They, they, they don't want the depth of what it actually entails yet. Mm. It's just easier to keep it at the surface where I have an out rather than I've made a commitment to this. And isn't that the scary thing though? We're it, just, <laughs> it's easier to keep it at the surface. That and not in a lot a of the ways is the world in which we have created right now. That scares me. Yeah. Because it's hard to have a deeper relationship with people because you're going to get hurt their wants and conditions are going to impact you. Yeah. And this is where boundaries come into play. So I'm going to pivot to that real quick mm -hmm. because all of this, if I'm going to start to create something where I operate unconditionally, but my relationship has conditions are still going to be contingent on the boundaries I'm able to enforce and keep in place. Yeah. And I love uh, cloud and Townsend's book boundaries. That's where seminal work, What's that about? And this the title <laughs> says it, uh, but well, one of the ways I've loved uh, Dr. Glover succinctly described boundaries is there's three different kinds. And if you think of them concentric circles, like it's a bullseye. Yeah. So internal boundaries, yeah. personal boundaries and relational boundaries is the outer circle. And so internal boundaries are just the commitments you make to yourself. Uh, you say you're going to get up and go to the gym after work that day and you don't. You didn't tell anybody you're going to, but you actually went against one of your own internal boundaries. Right. That's right? say your internal conflict that, man, am I living up to who I'm right. going to be? Gonna, I'm going to go on a fast of spending for 30 days, but yet I buy something on the side. I, I went against an internal boundary. No one knew I had right. made that commitment, but I went against the commitment I had made to myself. Yep. yep. And then personal boundaries are the ones that are the most popular ones that we know about, which is how close can somebody get to me? What can they do while they're there? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, gotcha. And then relational boundaries are ones that we collaborate to create together as I'm just using you and I as the example yeah. of, you know, I care about our relationship enough that I'm not going to put myself in a position to where I'm alone with a woman in a car 
taking her home for whatever reason, or I'm, you know, and you're going to not be on a road trip with a guy business wise, you know, it just, right. it's because we're trying to protect our relationship. Yeah. And so those are a mutually agreed upon thing. Yeah. So when we can think of boundaries in that regards, this is what's going to help frame where we're going to go here in just a minute. Okay. And then the other thing for those of you that are in the nation that love reading and learning different things, uh, nonviolent communication is where some of this, the rest of the show is coming from. It's a book from Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, I've, I, I came across him in grad school and read a bunch of his work and it is fantastic because this is not about uh, just bending over backwards or demanding and ruling. It's just the, the terms we use, I just started last listening to a book actually of the pronouns we choose is the name of the book. Okay. And it's not about the identity thing in the world, but it's the little words we use and how much influence they actually have over mm. all of our life. Interesting. And so his work in nonviolent communication is a great, uh, deeper dive in this idea. Okay. If you've got, if you want some conflict management work mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and negotiation work, uh, this is one that can be really good. Uh, another aside, if you want to do something with conflict, uh, is Chris Voss's book, never split the difference, who was the FBI lead hostage negotiator for a long time. And now has created this whole big black swan group and they got stuff going on all over the world yeah. and it's really good too, yeah. but it's some of the same premise because when I want to create a marriage that can go deeper or a relationship that can go deeper, I've got to live according to the conditions I'm setting. And okay. I also have to recognize people won't always honor or respect the conditions I'm setting. It, true. True. Cause that holds them to another level as well. Like and, some and of them, frankly, they that. won't like it. Yeah. Right. Because, Even our spouse won't like it. Right. And, I'm immediately thinking of the fact that a lot of times uh, our family of origins may not like it. Well, that's not what our family does. <laughs> okay. This is the that way we sense. do this. Yeah. Right. And some of this is it's inherently. Like sabotage of your own yeah, relationship. Some of this is inherently going to come out because what we will do most of the time is we meet and fall in love and marry somebody that is different enough that it's going to test the conditions I've got. Mm as well as the family of origin conditions they've got. Cause I can't tell you, I'd have to sit back, sit down and do a guesstimate of the percentage of clients I've had over the two decades of doing this job where one person whose family, uh, fought it out, out loud, dinner table, mm -hmm. lawyers argue across the board on severity or not, but just, it was way out in the open on how they processed what was going on in life and fought it out. Yeah. Marries the person that was raised in the family that never saw any of those kinds of conversations happen if they happened at all. And yeah. so immediately that relationship is set, set up for how are you going to handle conflict? Yeah. Cause both spouses are coming from a totally different background. Right. Yeah. And it's easy That's for it. us to take the stance of, well, my way is right. Mm -hmm. This is the way you're supposed to do it. When, no, it's just the way you, you were modeled. Right. And let's look at what dysfunction you're now seeing in the family <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> Hopefully. Right. What is it you're not liking about Right, because when abortion? you start unpacking that, and this, let's just do a quick aside, a lot of times what would happen in the family that n didn't talk it out at all, which in some ways was mine, um, it was more obligatory, obedient, this is the role I play actually at work not going deep with stuff, not actually facing stuff. So typically somebody was swallowing more than their fair share and yeah. then getting it back some other way. Yeah. And the reverse can be true too. The other family that talked it all out, quote unquote, typically the most of the time from my experience in talking to the clients that have had this, the talking it all out really meant whoever it was that was taking the I'm right stance just kept talking until everybody agreed with them. Or they just got worn out. Well, that's do the I point. have to agree? Could I've just stormed you off? Just, you just give in. I, they just finally give up on it. Like that's dad's just not going to get off that stance. And, you know, cause there's not a lot of families. I love this. One of the, one of the guys in one of my mastermind groups, he, he has a phrase in his household that says we learn from each other in this house. Yeah. 
And that's been the entirety of their uh, parenting role. Yeah. That even when their kids were little, now they're older, but even when they were little, like we still learn from you. We don't have a lock on how this is supposed to go <laughs> in, in the right, quote unquote. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, even us with our kids uh, and stuff that's come up and we've had a parenting fail. Right. You know what? That was a parenting fail. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for the first time with you. Sorry, you're the oldest. You're getting the broken in. Yeah. But even when the second comes around, that kid's different than the oldest, right? Just when we think we got it figured out. Yeah. It, it changes. It all changes. So it, it, modeling that is key. I love that he's got that phrase with his family. Right. And so it's seeing this. I want to go through some examples of what we will often do, Pam, mm -hmm. uh, and I mean other people, not us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just about spit up my coffee right there. <laughs> well, well okay. what, what you and I will often do, I'll own this completely, yeah. is uh, when I'm heated or I'm over overwhelmed or I'm regressed and I'm not thinking clearly, I'm just reacting. I mean, and I'll just be personal. Uh, when I'm of wanting to avoid a conflict, I will figure out ways to just get out of the conflict rather than address the conflict. And typically the ways I can do that is just lay it all on you. If you would just blank, I would be willing to blank, right? This is, the, this is what's so interesting to me. Quick aside to throw all the communication training that's out there in the, under the bus real quick. There's that standard, I feel blank when you blank, so therefore I need blank. Okay. Right. Yes. That's, that's kind of the standard. Here's how I'm supposed to make my request, which also has an undercurrent of you better honor my request. Right. And it's not necessarily taught with that undercurrent, but I think it's still built in unless yeah. we acknowledge they may or may not do it. But you've got to realize how am I getting across? That's where we want to go. Yeah. So one of the statements that we often can hear, I'm just going to, I got several examples and we're just going to, well, you and I are going to work to reword them. Okay. So one of them can be, so you made me sad when you didn't call me last week. So this would be in a friendship, let's say. Right? Okay. I mean, because that's, that's one of the things we could just, it's a reactive statement. Yeah. This is back to the, I'll call you tomorrow. Right. But you made me and sad you when you didn't. Yeah. And so to just to unpack this, so you kind of get an idea of what I'm thinking about, and then we'll mm -hmm. collaborate through the, the next ones. It's, well, first off, can anybody make you anything? No, that's, that's one of the premises we've got to at least confront. Yeah. Because I don't believe we make anybody feel what they feel. Yeah. They feel what they feel. And, and I don't want to get so far as do they choose it or not? Because a lot of times our emotions are just reactions. They're triggers. They just, they're inherently biologically there. Yeah. How many times did so-and-so not call me back 10 years ago? And it, yeah, it's, well, it's triggering me for something. Else. But this is one of those things I think we often do as human beings where the self-talk I've got going on is, well, they made me angry. They made me rather than, did they? The situation you reacted to with anger, but did they make you? Yeah. Because I believe we always have choice. Right. And one of my favorite examples of this is when I was in grad school, I was reading a book uh, just for fun during the time on uh, Medal of Honor winners. Mm -hmm. And it was from the Korean War, uh, World War II, Vietnam War, et cetera. Yeah. And it was one of them was uh, the World War II, I believe. Uh, a, a platoon had landed on an island in the Philippines where they had gotten intelligence that said the Japanese had gone to the other side of the hill. Yeah. And so they had a beach head in a cove that could land safely and then attack, get the hill and then attack. Okay. Well, as they pulled in, their intelligence was wrong. Oh. They were completely surrounded. It was an ambush waiting to happen. And the guy that won the Medal of Honor, as soon as they hit the ground, realized we have no option here. We're all dead. Right? Yeah. But I can choose how I'm going to go out. Yeah. And so he actually saved a couple of the platoon members by the way he faced his death mm. right so the fact of he didn't have a choice if he was going to die or not yeah. he had a choice of how yeah. he was going to go down yeah i think that's the way i can go about everything yeah mark manson uses the phrase of you may not be to blame for what goes on in your life but you are responsible 
And I think that's such a key phrase mm-hmm. it, the taking responsibility for where, what I do with where I am. Right. And even if it was be out of my control where I am, no one else can dig me out of where, out of it. Right. It, I, that's on me. Right. And so that phrase of you made me sad when you didn't call me last week, we would rephrase that in my mind would be when you don't call, it causes me to feel sad. Right. Because that's, that's more of a, it's a less blaming stance. Yeah. Right. And so here's, here's one that we could actually, you know, let's do real quick. You made me angry when you forgot our anniversary. So of course, based on the, I can't make someone sad. I also can't make someone angry. Right. That's their right. response. Right. Um, are we, we're rephrasing this? Yeah. Now? So let's, let's go through what no. would, what would be a better way to phrase this and tap out. I'll help you all the way through. Well, I think, I this think is a that collaboration. is the, it, you make me angry when what, what was you this? forgot our anniversary. All right. So. I think I would rephrase that as, you know, anniversary is really important to me. It really hurts. There you go. When you're not. Yeah. Um, it hurt that it was forgotten. That it's not, it seems not important to you. Yeah. That's the, that's my perception yeah, based on you forgetting it. Cause all, all of this, if you think about the history of our show and the way we have gone for sure recently, the last three or four years where I've really been, uh, specific on trying to help people recognize I need to address impact, Mm -hmm. not the character of the person. And that's the same idea. The impact of they forgot our anniversary and that hurt me. Yeah. I was hurt by that. Yeah. I mean, so I think if, because again, this is standing up and being able to say what matters to me Mm -hmm. and what's going on Mm -hmm. in a relationship. Cause it's not about, I just let it go. Uh, one, yeah. another yeah. one can be, why do you keep ticking me off by leaving your stuff everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, because again, think about how easily we can just, we can't help ourselves. <laughs> we just yeah. say these things. Would you please pick up after yourself? I'm tired of picking up after you. Yeah, that works. That's, but I think that's the got, first thing that comes to I my mind. I think we can also do, um, a cleaner house matters to me. And I don't have your support in it. And it's frustrating where I stand within the condition I've got of how I want life and our relationship to be. Okay. I've got a partner in it or I don't. That's it. That phrase right there really hits home to me. I've got a partner in this or I don't. And it's on this aspect of the relationship because be careful to not add a blanket to the entirety of the relationship. Right, that we're not partners at all. Right. Because yeah. there's other areas where absolutely we are on the same page. We collaborate, we are supportive and we're allies, mm-hmm. but then there's nuances in relationships that are just differences, right? These are the two different types of conflicts that we have, right? One is just, they're just differences. So to take it on another track, if I really don't give a flip about the house being clean, mm-hmm. I don't want to be a partner in that side of things. Right. How do I how do I respond it, even if they come at me in a, in a good way, you know, I, I, it's important to me for the house to be clean. I don't feel like we're partners in this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's not high on my radar. Right. You are going to be alone in this one. At least then, cause this is where I would think professionally well, speaking, at least I know what I'm facing and do I want to keep trying to pound my partner into a way I want them to be. Or do I face who I am in the relationship context? Yeah. What I actually have in the relationship con. This is, this is dealing with what's present, not what's missing because the hope of you would be an ally in this with me is what's missing. Yeah. That's the fairy tale illusion. Yeah. Rather than what am I really facing? Well, I'm facing somebody that that's not a priority. So is that a deal breaker for me? Yeah. You look at the severity of whatever the topic is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, this gets into, this is where it gets so insidious because what we often will do is I'll come to grips with, this is just the reality of the relationship dynamic. This is who I'm married to. Yeah. And then when we get into a fight later, it can be weaponized. Bring it up. You could even weaponize it. 
Yeah. You know, and it, but it, the more I get into this element of wait, this is unconditionally how I'm wanting to live within the conditions of my marriage. I can take away some of the sting of that kind of a move. Like if you tried to weaponize it back at me, well, you're such a, you're so anal in the way you want the house, blah, blah, blah. I could be like, you're right. <laughs> I am. I am. That's not a hot, that's not a button to make me lose my crap. It's a, it's a button of, because I want it to clean anyway, so I wouldn't lose my crap. But you know, that was a joke and that's swinging a miss. Uh, um, just a bit outside. But it's recognizing that whenever I own what can be used against me, it's harder to have it used against me because it's the preference I am. It's yeah. who I am. That's I the unconditional it. nature of living life. Yeah. So, okay. A couple more. Okay. Before we run out of time. All right. Um, so here's, here's some of the other ones that's kind of interesting uh, because one of the ways what we were talking about before is just trying to address things that have happened, but how do we also address the things that allow that also respect somebody else's autonomy? Mm -hmm. Because how often do we say something like, if you love me, you'll come to my family's birthday party. Right. Because it's a, how often a do we say that? Well, I'll think of that and say, I've never said that, well, but okay. <laughs> okay. Something like that then of, if that sounds you, very clingy to me, that's fair. And that, <laughs> that is not who I'm married. <laughs> for sure. But there are, there are times where we have a condition of, if you love me, if you care about our marriage, you would come to the office Christmas party, or you would come to my family's event or, okay. right. And that's, that's not respecting somebody else's autonomy. I'm not saying you would say this because I know you would. Well, say it I get way. it. Cause that, that's a pretty severe phraseology to say, oh, you're saying that you think I don't love you if I don't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's pretty severe. It is, um, but it's what we say as people. That's what some people say. Mm, they won't say, maybe you don't say it this way, but there's going to be other ways it can be expressed of, do you even care about this? I, I don't feel like we're on the same page at all. You don't even care about our marriage. And this is when we get flooded and overreacted. That it's, I think it's stuff we all had the capacity of doing. Okay. So if I'm phrasing that differently, then you just start talking about, you know, it's important to me if you came with me to the party. Yeah. It would mean a lot. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. You, it's an invitation, not a, not a demand. Right. And that's, so that's just a difference. I get it. I get it. I think I'm getting hung up on the whole, if you love me, right. you would. Right. Um, but I get that when you rephrase it to the, that makes me think you don't think our marriage is important. Right. That somehow that hits me diff a lot differently than the whole phrase of, well, if you love me. Right. <laughs> right. Cause it does feel anyway, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit trail. That's just how my mind well, works. Well, but, it, but it's also, okay, let's go this way of, um, here's another question or statement we could say of, you better quit smoking if you want to be with me or oh. you better quit whatever if you want to be with me. That's, uh, that's saying the exact same thing in a slightly different way as if you love me, you will. Well, how many callers or emailers have we had of if, if you want to be with me, you got to quit porn. Mm -hmm. Okay. On a moral standpoint. You know, I'm, I'm hearing that going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not <laughs> right? talking. Okay. But I'm not talking about the, the principles of what's at play. Okay. I'm talking about how you address those principles because addressing it with, if you love me, you'll quit porn. If you want to be with me, you'll quit porn. That's not respecting somebody else's autonomy and choice. And in a relationship, you want someone to choose yes. to be with you yes. rather than be forced because you're laying down the law and telling them this is how it has to because be. Because then there's this element is that where you're still, getting at? yes, because okay. I've got a lot of different times where I'll hear guys and, and women talking about some dynamic they want to change for their spouse's benefit. And I'm, I'll ask the question of what's the primary motivator here? Yeah. Is it to make them happy or get them off your back? Or is that who you really want to be? Yeah. Cause you gotta be aware of that. Yeah. Because if it's, if it's about, I just want them off my back, you're not really choosing then. 
And that comes out. If you're not really choosing that, absolutely, there will. might be a temporary relief, but at some point you're going to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, wait, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I can't help you here, babe. I went on to something else in my own yeah, mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just get frustrated because you're not feel, you don't feel like you're being hurt either. Right. 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 You're being, you're being dismissed in this. And you, I mean, there's always that question in the back of somebody's mind of why are you here? Why did you do this? Is mm -hmm. it just to make me happy or are you really choosing this? Yeah. Right. This is what plays out in sex a lot is obligatory sex is bad for both parties. Right. Because goes back to the, is it sex worth having? Right. Because yeah. it's the question of what's the real motivation? Are they just trying to get you off their back? Yeah. Or are they choosing to participate in this out of love? Yeah. Yeah. The, the other partner knows the difference. And you can read it long. Yeah. If, if you're paying attention, you'll know Yeah. in the long run. But so that question of if you quit, if you better quit smoking, if you want to be with me, I think we would rephrase that into something along the lines of it's important to me, uh, your health yeah, and who I'm with. And that's not something I want to be around. Yeah. That's kind of a, just a different statement. Yeah. I'm saying the same thing, but I want to respect a boundary. Yeah. The easier one to talk about would be, um, let's say you got holidays are not too far away. That's crazy to think yeah. about the timing. And so that means you're going to be heading home to family of origin, which can mean some subjects that some people maybe just won't let go. Mm. And maybe they, maybe your parents don't agree with the career choice you've made or a purchase that you've made or way you're raising your kid or mm -hmm. whatever. And they will harp on that. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you're blah, blah, blah. And so if you want to actually take a stance, then it becomes, you know what? I don't want to talk about that. Mm. Well, but I'm a, fair enough, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. That's the same thing we've talked about that we do in marriage where one of us gets overreactive and say, I'm not, we're never talking about that again. Like, well, you just overstepped your, my autonomy in our relationship. I can still bring it up. You don't have to participate in the conversation though. Okay. That's respecting each other's autonomy. Okay. You're free to handle you however you want to handle you. Okay. But I'm going to take a stand for what I believe and what I want in life. Well, I, and I see those relationships as different. I'm, and I guess maybe I'm not hearing exactly what you're saying, but when I'm, when I'm at home over the holidays, I can tell my parents, I'm not talking about that mm -hmm. with you. Cause that's a whole different relationship than with my spouse. It is. If my spouse tells me, I'm not talking about that with you. That doesn't go away. No, it doesn't. But then, you ha then you're left with how do you face it in the long run, which would be more along the lines of, I know you said you don't, you don't want to talk about this, but I'm going to keep bringing it up because it's important to me. Yeah. But you bring it up in the sense that I'm making my point or I'm offering my side, not that I need the conversation. I'm inviting the conversation. Okay. There's a big difference because I think a lot of times this is something that has rung true with a lot of clients when I've told them this phraseology. Sometimes conversations take place over the course of a consecutive days, weeks, sure, months, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And most of the time when this has come up with clients, I'm like, yeah, Pam and I are in a conversation that I think the ball's in her court and it's been a couple of days. She'll get back to me with it at some point. Yeah. It'll come back around at some point. But not every com invitation to a conversation has to be accepted like it's a tennis match right now. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, hey, let's go back to the smoking one. I'm, I'm scared of, the, of what the health ramifications can be if you keep smoking. Well, I'm going to keep doing it. I understand. But I'm also not going to just avoid it. I don't need to, I'm not going to badger you with it. Yeah. But I'm going to show you it's, it matters to me. And so then my condition would be you're a smoker. I'm hypothetically here because you're not at yeah. all. But And I'm taking this stance with you. And then you come to me with a kiss one time after smoking. I'm like, no, I don't really. I'm not going to kiss a smoker's mouth. That's a condition. And that's a big move that changes yeah. the dynamic. Yeah. Well, let me go brush my teeth. Okay. We'll see if that works. <laughs> Right. But yeah. because we'll figure out, we'll try to figure out ways yeah. around it. Yeah. But my goal in this whole show is just to bring to the surface. We all have conditions, mm -hmm. but how do I unconditionally try to live within those conditions? 
that's the point. Because I want to still be me and express me in the way I want to go about things. Gotcha. This is a conversation you and I have had about bringing up different subjects with our kids over the years as they become teenagers and become just emotional, reactive, drama, uncertain, you know, all the different things because they're figuring themselves out too. Just not like we've got ourselves figured out by any means. No, no. But, you know, our son right now is me as a teenager. When I was a teenager, the feelings I had, I didn't know what I was feeling. Didn't know how to express them. Yeah. I just never would bring them up or talk about them, nor was I really asked about them. Whereas he's being raised by parents that ask. (laughs) And so he's, I don't know. And he gets gruff with his reactions, which is a normal teenage thing. Yeah. Well, that leaves us in this predicament of, I don't even want to bring it up. Versus that's for sure me. I'm you like, know what, ah, buddy? I don't want to get his reaction. You know what, buddy? I'm going to still bring these things up. Yeah. And I know the reaction I'm going to likely get. I'll take it because I'm going to bring it up. That's the whole premise of what we're talking about here. Yeah. We know the gridlock things we face in marriage. I want to make sure I don't let my partner's reaction to them determine my stance towards them. And in that vein, I think that, it's, um, hopefully the way I'm bringing it up and I think of this with, with will, but hopefully it, it would bleed over into the marriage relationship too. I'm not asking to be a pain in the butt. I'm asking because I love you and I'm bringing it there on the surface because I want us to be better. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's, there's good intentions there. A lot of people have good intentions and just go about it poorly. Right. Um, but including I, ourselves, including ourselves, <laughs> but ideally we're getting better all the time. Um, so it's not just to get our point across. Sometimes it's just to op- try and open an opportunity for dialogue at some point. So here's this, this is the premise of me getting better at taking a stance in my conditions and living according to those better with my boundaries is what sets the stage for a relationship to go deeper, yeah. but to, for it to go deeper, there has to be a collaboration to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And far too often what we'll do this is a great way to land the show, babe. So nice setup far too often. What we will do is I will want you to operate in a certain manner so that then therefore we can go deeper, but that's not really deeper. Mm. That's safe. You know, sort of, it's not really, it's illusionary safe. More comfortable maybe. Well, yeah. But it's that idea of recognizing, I want to give the opportunity for this to be deeper and I'll see if you'll choose it or not. Yeah. It's an opportunity for you to live in a closer proximity to me and I'll see if you choose it or not. Yeah. And the ways I need to do that is one respecting my boundaries and honoring those, which is my job to enforce and implement, not other people's job to respect. And that's a huge component. You hope Um, they will, but they won't all the time. And that can be a character indictment or just the fact that they don't want what you want. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it's also, I need to respect their autonomy and the fact that I want to give them choice. Most of us don't want to face relationships that way because mm. it's too scary. Cause what I may end up finding is I don't have a relationship. Yeah. They're not choosing me. And that's the scary part. Yeah. Schnarch put it this way that a lot of times in relationships and in lives, depending on our histories, um, we really are just asleep and a lot of things that are going on in our world. And the reason we want to actually stay asleep and not wake up is because what we would wake up to is a nightmare for a moment. Yeah. Because I don't want to acknowledge how bad it actually is. Mm. But there's hope when I do, because then I get to bring some light into that darkness and find hope and support and safety within myself and with other people. Yeah. 